happy Saturday, everybody. You're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boating, and I'm so, 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 so excited today. We have a winning woman who is a winner. We'll be right back. You can't miss it today. for the woman on the move a female entrepreneur very 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 hard working pressing on towards her goal let's see who she is For many students, entrepreneurship is a journey to embark on after school. In the case of Rachel Sika Apusiyene, a fourth-year Bachelor of Law student at the University of Ghana, she stumbled upon a niche and stuck with it. Rachel started her business when she was in second year. She would buy the bonnets from someone else and sell for a percentage of the profit. I had lovely permed hair, so I wanted to grow lovely natural hair. I read about it and I bought a bonnet from another person and eventually I started retailing for her. Initially her aim was to make supplementary income. Soon the business became popular among her friends and to avoid hiking the prices for a decent profit she started making her own bonnets. As I started taking more the profit margin was reducing and it wasn't worth taking it so that meant that I had to sell the bonnets at a higher price to make something decent from it. And it's bonnets. It's not supposed to be too expensive. Although some colleagues told her selling bonnets is an unconventional business path for a law student, her love for natural hair helped her overcome the challenges. It was not easy, but this is something I love. I'd, I'd want to carry it out long term. The main hurdle will be combining it with school. I want to do this for a very long time. I have a lot of plans for for this business, for hair care in general. I'd like to partner with other brands that are African hair conscious, because our hair is different. Rachel says she has had a lot of support and encouragement from family. Some friends help her package and model the product to cut down her production costs. I registered a sole proprietorship and it was, it was quite seamless. I had to get a tin and it was, it was easy. I was, I was quite impressed with the system, with the email notifications, the text messaging. It was quite efficient. Branding it, that, that, was, that was a problem. That's where a lot of the money was, was taken from. So you would have to pay a photographer. And in my case, I don't like repeating fabrics, as I said earlier. So with every new collection, you need a photographer. She explains. She chose to use satin due to the protective advantages of the fabric. Satin is such that it doesn't absorb moisture from your hair. And anyone with kinky hair, a kind of hair knows that moisture is a, is a struggle to keep moisture in your hair. It will either dry up too fast or it will soak up your hair. So you want something that will maintain the moisture in your hair at an optimum level. Satin does just that. You would also want something that will not break your hair when it rubs against it. So when your hair rubs against cotton and other fabrics, it breaks it. But when it rubs against satin, it's, it glides over the satin. So no breakage, maintains moisture, and it's lightweight. Over the years, there has been a steady global African women's drive that has encouraged natural methods of hair care. Ghana, in particular, has been a leading proponent of the movement. I started selling to my classmates and I decided to start an Instagram business page and it's been amazing. So there's something for everyone. You could have a monochrome bonnet that's just satin in and out for 20 CDs for an adult and 15 CDs for a baby. Yes, and then you could have this. This is a satin lined bonnet and it comes with a pillowcase for 39 CDs. Rachel intends to continue selling bonnets even after school as she hopes to expand the business to meet the changing needs of clients by adopting environmentally sustainable packaging.
Our winning woman for today is Michelle McKinney Hammond. I call her Lady Michelle because she's such a lady and a beautiful <laughs> one. And I'm so excited to have her on today. She's an author of over 40 books. I don't know if you've heard her singing before. Her voice is out of this world. It's just so heavenly. I'm so honored to have you on here today. Oh, You've been on thank you. amazing shows, so many of them. I've seen you on 700 Club. Mm -hmm. You've been, and today she's on the Today's Woman Show. I'm so excited <laughs> to have you here today. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for coming and happy birthday. Thank you. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. It's her birthday too. I don't <laughs> want to destroy it by singing. My voice <laughs> is nothing like yours. <laughs> but happy That's birthday funny. and thank you so <clears throat> much for coming. It's such an honor. I've been at so many events. Um, in which you've spoken and I've been so inspired Thank and today you. I have you here and I'm going to like juice everything out of you and okay. just grab the anointing. <laughs> I'm going to just, you know, so I'm just so happy. You're very, very welcome. Thank, Thank you, for, you for joining us today. So today is all about you. We want to find out there's mm. so many people out there who follow you on social media, on Instagram. Sometimes I'm live. I see how many people join you live when you come on and yes. there's so many people who are in awe of Michelle McKinney Hammond. Ah. And we want to find out about you and how you got to where you are. So again, you're very, very welcome. Thank and please you. Tell us about you. How did you, you know, how did you start? How did you grow up? Oh, well, um, I have kind of a convoluted history. I was born in London okay. um, because a lot of people just assume that I'm American. But yeah, I, I thought so too. I had to get my green card like everyone else. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> my dad is Ghanaian okay. and my mom is West Indian. She's from Barbados. Okay. So um, I was born in London. Mm. I ended up spending some time uh, growing up with my grandmother and my aunts in Barbados before my mom married an American and we moved to Michigan, first of all. Oh, right. So very ex exotic location of Barbados to Michigan mm -hmm. <laughs> with lots of snow. And um, from there, I, I moved to Chicago okay. to attend Ray Vogue School of Design, which is now the Illinois, um, the Illinois School of Design or something. They've oh, wow. renamed it. Okay. But I studied commercial art. Okay. Um, I actually had been accepted at Juilliard. But my dad, being a good Ghanaian parent, said, mm, this singing thing, what's wrong with you? I know. Find a real job. You know how that goes. Be a so, lawyer or a doctor or something. Yes, which I didn't want to be any of those. Right. So we finally agreed that I would study commercial art. Because at first I picked fashion illustration. Because at the time I had a boyfriend who was a designer. So I okay. thought that was, you he said, no, no, him. no. Yeah, he said, find something else. So I got commercial art. Mm -hmm. And I actually was quite surprised to find out that it was something I loved doing because I was very artistic. Okay. Um, so I, when I graduated from there, I worked for the largest African-American owned advertising agency in America called wow. Burrell. It was Burrell Advertising. It's now Burrell Communications. Wow. Okay. Um, so I was hired there as an art director and uh, added a copywriter and producer to my roster by the time I was finished there where I, I wrote and uh, designed uh, radio, television, and print advertising wow. for uh, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, oh, wow. Ford Motor okay. Company, General Motors, Johnson Products, wow. Legs, Pantyhose, Schlitz Malt Liquor, oh, my and goodness. lots of other um, brands. So I got to have a very exciting life and fly mm. to New York and Los Angeles mm. and do commercials. So you loved what you were doing? Oh, I loved it. It was oh, like wow. playing, you know. Wow. I mean, get on the plane and be wooed by different directors who wanted your business. They take you to wow. all these fancy dinners. And, oh, and I, I got to go that. to all the awards shows, you know, the Soul Train Awards oh, and American wow. Music. So wow. it was quite a heady existence. Mm. And I got to work with a lot of celebrities. Mm. Um, uh, shortly after I got hired, I became a born again Christian. So okay. I think that God saved me before things got out of hand. Because so what we, led you to Christ? Well, I was, um, I hadn't started working at Burrell yet. I was actually um, working freelance. I was working at the Playboy Club. Okay. And I wanted to be a bunny. <laughs> I really? To, I really wanted to be a oh, bunny. Wow. But I had just missed the bunny call and they liked me. So they kept me to the side and had me work in, in the boutique, which was owned by Christy Hefner, who was Hugh Hefner's daughter at the okay. time. So while I was working in there, a lady that I used to dress all the time 
asked me, what do you really do? Because there's something different about you. And I said, oh, well, I studied advertising and, you know, I'm going to try to work at Burrell Advertising. And I had gone already and they hadn't minded me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I dropped off my mm -hmm. portfolio. He said, so I have this friend who works at Leo Burnett, which was another big ad agency. So I went to see him and he says, oh, I'm freelancing over at Burrell. <laughs> So he took me right back over to Burrell. Wow. I started working freelance there. Mm -hmm. At the time, I had a boyfriend I was very much in love with, and we had just started living together. Well, we had an argument, and he flew to California. And while he was in California, he was shot, and he oh, um, died a month later. Oh, and that just sent me into to a tailspin. I was literally suicidal, blamed myself for it a lot, and, oh. and went through a lot of uh, deep soul searching. And that is how mm. I came to the Lord. Um, at the time, a movie, The Late Great Planet Earth, had just come out by okay. Hal Lindsey, and I was busy working freelance at Burrell, so I didn't have a chance to go see the movie, so I got the book because I was a little curious about mm -hmm. end-time prophecies right. and things like that. It looked so interesting. So I was reading that book, and in the middle of the night, I put it down and asked the Lord into my life. Years later, when I became an author, I got to meet Hal Lindsey oh, at wow. uh, a writer's conference, wow. and I walked up to him, and I said, I'm your fruit. Wow. And he said, what? And I said, I'm your fruit. I read your book and I put it down in the middle of the night and I asked the Lord to come into my heart. And now here I am, I'm an wow. author with three books. And he just burst into tears. I know, this I know. Big, I'm, I'm getting emotional <laughs> This big right man, now. you know, he oh, just, he just started bawling like a baby at this conference. People were like, are you okay? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it was. I was just so happy to be able to let him know that. But yeah. it's funny that you're saying this because just last week I was talking to a friend and I was like, oh, guess what? You won't believe who I've got to come on the show. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned it. And she was like, she said one of your books. She said, you don't know how I went somewhere. I got one of her books. I read it and my life changed. Wow. And I was like, wow. So, so like, this is, you know, you've just written a book. You think, oh, I've just written a book, you know, but it's probably saving lives out there. Wow. And th this, is, this is a real testimony. Yeah. That, that, that's amazing. So we have to toast to this. Congratulations. Yes, most definitely. Yep. Oh, and a very happy birthday! Thank you. I'll say I hear like this is called sweet. Island Girls. Oh, so mine we'll is the deep blue sea. Oh, okay. Ah. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Lovely. Mm, very it's refreshing. In there, really nice. Grapefruit and something really, else. Really yes, nice. very nice. Oh, wow. So you've written about forty books. Yes. And I'm just wondering, how do you get the messages? How do you know what to write? Well, you know, when I wrote my first book, it was called "What to Do Until Love Finds You." Mm -hmm. Because that's where I was in my life. Mm. Um, I was, when I came to the Lord, I had been, you know, I'd had a bunch of guys in my life and mm. everything. And all of a sudden, my lifestyle had to change. Mm. I found myself really struggling with the single life as a Christian. Right. And um, I had a bunch of new friends who were new believers. And we all would sit and commiserate about how were we going to navigate our way through this Christian life as single women yeah. and would God give us husbands like right away so we didn't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, around that time, I was, I was, I really struggled with it. I, mm. I had severe struggles and mm. I would go to the bookstore to find material and there really wasn't any. The two books that they had made me feel like I wasn't saved yet. And, and just I found more condemning than convicting or life-changing. So I was like, gosh, there's nothing here. And I had a mentor in California who wrote a book called Night in Shining Armor, mm -hmm. Bunny Wilson. And so I had read that. And mm -hmm. even hers was a little tough because she was a tough cookie. She raised me in the Lord, but she was tough. <laughs> and so I was sharing with her because I, I actually got to the point where I said to God, God, I don't want to be married until you can prove to me that I can be happy with just you. Wow. Very dangerous wow, prayer. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, he started showing me things about love and about life and my purpose and who I was as a woman. And I got so happy. Um, and I was sharing that with Bunny. And Bunny said, no one's writing that. You need mm. to write that as a book. So that's how What to Do Until Love Finds You came into wow. being. I wrote the first chapter. And I have to confess, I didn't write anything else again for several years. Mm. Then one day I was walking across the street and I got hit by a car. I ended up in bed for a year and a half. Three surgeries oh, later, I wrote that book in bed and it became a bestseller right away. Before we even knew how to do bestsellers, it sold out of its first printing in oh, three weeks. And the publisher was like, oh my goodness. You know, and so from that, 
they came back and said, what do you want to write next? And I was like, I got to keep this up. <laughs> I'm too sanguine for this, you know. <laughs> but um, I wrote uh, Secrets of an Irresistible Woman next. That also sold over 200,000 copies. Wow. And so from wow. there, life changed drastically. People started calling me. To Can I come here to events. speak? And, wow. you know, and I was like, I'm not a speaker. And, and my mentor said, you are, you've been called why, to speak. Why, why, did you, why did you say that, though? Well, why did you why did you think that? Well, you know, I I loved theater and I was in theater, but I had a very severe stage fright. And right before I would get great roles, I would always get a leading role. Mm. But then I would be sick as a dog the day that I was, you know, the opening Supposed night. And my mother said, "I don't know why you do this to yourself." So I just had this tremendous fear, and it actually came from. That's a whole other conversation about how. <laughs> fears happened, but mm. it, it came from, it had a root, it and, and I had I to overcome it, that. yes, but um, so I just said, no, I'm not a speaker. I mean, mm. that hadn't even crossed my mind. I love to sing, um, so I sang, um, and actually, I, I was singing at a, a retreat that my mother attended, mm -hmm. and a woman there said, you'd be a good speaker, and I said, mm. really? Because I, sure. I would just say a few little words to still my calm my nerves before I'd sing the song. So I would say something about the song so they'd know what I was singing about. Mm -hmm. She said, you'd be a great speaker. My sister trained speakers. I think you should go. So she sent me to that. And that was kind of how it evolved into me speaking. But no, I did not voluntarily sign up to be a speaker well, initially. Well, I've been at, at a couple <laughs> of your speaking engagements and they're life changing. Thank you. I have to say, I'm a speaker as well. Mm -hmm. and, yes, and, you are. You know, and I, I mean, it's like literally, I'm like, like this. <laughs> I mean, the last one I went to was Iwal. They had come yes. from Nigeria. Mm. And what I loved was it was just so pure mm. and just you were just being yourself. Mm. So it was just, just being so real. Mm. And that connection, the number of people there who were like, mm. you know, in awe. So great job, great Thank job you. you're doing. And I think at this point, I want you to encourage some woman out there watching. A mm. lot of us do this to ourselves. Mm. Oh, I'm not this. Mm -hmm. I'm not that. I'm not good enough to do this. Or no, she can do it. Yeah. This other person can do it. But a lot of the time we tell ourselves we cannot. Yeah. So please give a word to somebody watching who is probably, you know, telling herself she cannot do something. Well, you know, to be perfectly honest, mm. in and of myself, I can't. But God empowers me to do mm. what I do. And so I, I kind of blame him for whatever I do. So I just say, before I go up, God, are you going? Because if you're not going, I'm not going. Yeah. And as long as he's going, then I know that I'm there to deliver a message that he's placed on my heart. And it's not about me. I think um, for me, the biggest thing is removing myself from the equation when I get up to speak to people. And I'm much more um, focused on the needs of the people I'm speaking mm. to. I'm driven by that. That's what fuels me. And I feel it pulling me as I speak. Mm. So sometimes I make notes of things I'm going to talk mm. about. And I don't even talk about that yeah. because I get there and I start to feel the room. I start to feel people's hearts. Mm. And I get pulled in a completely different direction. Mm. And I'm very passionate about people um, settling issues in their life right. and, and coming to conclusions. Right. Right. So do you do counseling as well? I mean, I think you'd be a fantastic coach. I don't know if you're um, doing that. I, I do limited coaching. Okay. I actually took it off my website. And I you had, get it over books. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> you know what happens is I get too wrapped up in people's problems. Mm. And then, you know, I'm talking to them and I'm still thinking about it two weeks later and yes, worried about it and really, praying about it. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so I took it off. Well, one of my former clients called me and she said, it's not on your website, and I need you. I need to sign up for a year. You need to walk through this thing with me. And I was like, oh, my God, here I go again. So I've actually been considering, and I said I was going to launch it um, in September, that I would take a limited number of yes, people for yes, coaching. Yes, yeah. yes, I think so. I think you'll be a fantastic coach. <laughs> no, you will be. I mean, I, I follow you. I, I read some of your material. You write a lot of blog posts, mm -hmm. like, yeah. well, you know, your captions mm -hmm. on Instagram and everything are very, very, very deep. Thank they you. get you thinking and yeah. get you, you know, to sort of like reflect mm -hmm. and make a decision. Yeah. You know, you definitely have to. Please don't take it off. We are putting it back <laughs> on. We are putting it back on. Well, no. I use my YouTube channel, too, to uh, okay. do a lot of teaching. Um, I have Ask Michelle. What's the handle on? Um, it's Michelle McKinney Hammond okay. on YouTube. Okay. So if they go there, um, I have Ask Michelle. They can even email me their questions. Okay. And, and I tape them and I answer oh, them on fantastic. YouTube. Yeah. Okay. So I do a lot okay. of teaching on and YouTube. And we'll be doing a live session soon. Okay. Follow us cool. on Instagram <laughs> at Michelle McKinney Hammond at Renee QGH. We'll be doing something soon to just push women out there yes. to believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, 
you speak a lot about being single mm -hmm. and you've moved to Ghana, you know, you're a half Ghanaian, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm sure now you've gotten a bit, oh, yes. you know a bit about our culture mm -hmm. now and about how, you know, and, some people actually believe mm -hmm. that you know you are incomplete if you are not married. Mm -hmm. Some women believe that. So then, now, poor Jesus, that, poor Paul. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. really. I really want you to educate women out there on mm -hmm. that. I mean, some some women are doing so well. You know, they've accomplished so much. They're working so hard, and yet they think they are not enough because they haven't found the man yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying yet because you still can. The, yeah. But the the age limit, the time limit, the pressures, you know, and all of that. So mm -hmm. you know, to to single women out there, what what would you say to them to sort of let them know that you are enough? Well, I would say first of all, you have to be enough in mm -hmm. order to get married. Mm -hmm. Um, if you are going with gaping holes and incompletions, you're not going to have a good marriage. It takes two whole people to have a good marriage. Oh, it says the two will become one, not the two halves will become yeah. one. And so I think that a lot of times one of the, the big myths is that we think that someone's going to come into our lives and complete us. Mm. Um, God completes you. And you as a completed person then become a help meet to someone to, to um, help them with their God-given assignment. So, um, and that can happen at any point in time. God is not on the clock concerning mm. that. Um, and the reality too, Renee, is that some of us are not going to get married. Mm. And we need to live every day as if we're not going to get married and allow God to surprise us mm. uh, with a mate should he mm. deem to do so. Do you think that some won't? Is I know some won't. Is Statistically, it a, it it's impossible. Do you think, do you think it's because they've decided I won't get married or this person is not good enough for me, that person is not good? You know, is it based upon? No, I think um, some people will not get married by choice. Mm. Um, there are three types of single people in the world. There are those that are not married by choice. There are those that are not married because of circumstances. Mm. And then there are those who make, uh, you know, just, just silly, silly. <laughs> silly, <laughs> silly choices, period. You know, so um, there are eunuchs for Christ. And then there are some that, that God has just made eunuchs for himself. Mm -hmm. And then there are the circumstances of right. life. So, uh, you know, I think that we have to get realistic. Isaiah quotes and says that in the last days, seven women will attach themselves to one man and said, mm -hmm. give me your name right. um, and I'll buy my own bread. Just take away the reproach of my mm -hmm. wi widowhood or singleness. And I don't consider it a reproach. I think that if God trusts you enough to stay single because he feels that he can operate more freely through you that way, mm -hmm. that that's an honor and that's a privilege. Um, the married person has certain things that they have to think about that will just rob you of time. And that doesn't mean that you can't get things done as a married person, but there's more on your plate. Mm -hmm. um, and so you should enjoy the freedoms you have as a single person. Mm -hmm. It's not a death sentence. It's not, it's not a life sentence. It can happen at any point in time. My, my favorite aunt got married for the first time at 67. Wow. Um, enjoyed 20 something years of wow. marriage before she passed on. Wow. And she said it was worth the wait. We had to talk mm. her into getting married because she was enjoying her mm. life so much. Mm. Um, and I think that it's very important. I think the reason she was able to enjoy her marriage was because she already enjoyed her life. This, this message, what I'm getting now is, is enjoy the wait. Yes. Whatever the wait is for. Yes. So it could be, you know, you finish, you've graduated mm -hmm. work, you haven't gotten a job yet. Right. You know, do something at that time. Find you out know, who you are. Do you understand? Yes. yes. yes Find yes, out who yes, you yes, are. Yes, Become yes. Um, the best you that you can mm -hmm. be. Know what you like and what mm -hmm. you don't like. What you're going to settle for and what you mm -hmm. won't settle for. Mm -hmm. What are the non-negotiables in your life? Right. Because what it does is it, it makes you much more discerning when you decide to, um, to pick that life partner. Because you get to pick too, even though we're waiting to be chosen as women, mm. we get to say yes or no. Mm. And let's face it, we could all be married. We just yeah. didn't like the people who yeah, asked. Who? So, it's <laughs> <laughs> so, so you said your aunt, you had to persuade her. You we had to you persuade have to her. Persu have, you, have you decided you don't want to? Or are you still I'm waiting? ambivalent. Okay. Um, I'm very happy as a single person. Mm. So for me, it would really take a man who pr literally drove me to distraction. <laughs> that I wanted to be with him because mm. my life is extremely full. You know, I've never had natural children, but you know, my band relevance, that's, there's 20. That yes. I have 20 children <laughs> yes. and they're in and out of the house all the time. Mm. And so my life is very full. Mm. My life is very crowded. So mm. the man would have to really navigate his yeah. way in and be a very special type of person to deal with my world. Right. And so I see the wisdom of God of keeping me single so long um, because it, 
he, I'm the full package now. Mm -hmm. And so he either buys into that or he doesn't. Right. Not too much is going to change. Of mm -hmm. course, we have to make adjustments when someone comes into our life. But I'm set on my path. And I know what my purpose is. And those are things that I can't be distracted away right, from. Right, right. Talk about purpose. How did you get to the point where you realized this is my purpose? You know, I think that people a lot of times spend a lot of time running around going, what's my purpose, what's my purpose? And literally as his grace and mercy overtakes, the blessings of the Lord overtake us, our purpose overtakes us mm -hmm. if we just stay on track, following literally the yellow brick road of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, I went from advertising and isn't it ironic, I said I wanted to sing and I had been accepted at Juilliard and my father said no. no. So I go to advertising, I end up right back in the recording studio, writing commercials, singing on wow. them, doing voiceovers, wow. being trained. I, I ended up working with the guys that now produce Rihanna and Beyonce. Oh, wow. uh, you know, we wow. were songwriting buddies. Mm -hmm. I got us our first music publishing deal. Wow. So it went full circle. So, you know, it says that Man can make plans, but God orders his steps. And in the end, God's mm. purpose prevails. Yeah. So here I am, um, right back dealing with music, mm. writing, speaking, all the things that I loved, but not knowing how I would get there. Yeah. But just as Trust the path unfolded, mm. one thing led to another, led to another. So I believe that if we're consistent in our walk, consistent in offering our gifts to God, consistent in nurturing those gifts into excellence because we all have gifts, but they're all raw. Mm. And so you keep fine tuning them and fine tuning them. And along as you fine tune and become excellent. I talk about fine tuning, how do you fine tune your gifts? So how do you find your gift mm -hmm. and then how do you sort of, you know, develop it? Well, what's in your hand? What comes naturally to mm. you? What are you passionate about? What makes your heart sing? What makes you angry? Those are usually the places where you locate your gift. What are the things that you do that others celebrate that you think are no big deal? Mm. That is a gift. Right. Um, you know, I, I always wrote well. Um, I sang. Um, I talked a lot and I like to give a lot of <laughs> advice even when it wasn't asked for. Mm, mm. Those were my gifts, yeah. but they had to be fine-tuned. I had to stop giving people advice when they didn't ask for it mm. and wait to be asked. So that's exactly. Anything, so God judgmental. said, write down all that advice in a book. Wow. And then people so will pay you to come. And just, exactly. You that. see, um, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. practice that singing. Go to voice coaching. Um, learn. Work with others who are good at what they do. Hone your craft. Um, you know, in its raw form, we, we get all excited and zealous, but fine tune those things mm -hmm. until they become something that others celebrate besides I don't yourself. Know why I feel like you're going to write another 50 books. Oh, Lord, <laughs> I don't so know about 50, wisdom. but I've got two rolling around <laughs> in my head right now. So much wisdom <laughs> like just bursting out of you. Now, how, how, how do you bridge the gap between, like, you know, being a Christian mm -hmm. in the secular world? Mm -hmm. You know, because you know all these people, you still know them. I'm yes. Sure you still, you know, in contact with them, you know, they, they know you, mm -hmm. um, you, you sing at different events yes. and all of that. So how do you bridge that gap? Well, I think that the world wants to know the truth. Mm. And as long as you operate from that, whatever you talk about from a place of authenticity and truth, mm -hmm. um, people will buy into. Mm -hmm. uh, take God out of the equation and his word still makes sense. Mm. So it really, and this is something that I think is even important in the church because we have a lot of emotional Christians. They don't know why they're happy. <laughs> they don't know why they have faith. They just do. Somebody told them to believe in Jesus and they and bought into it. that, but that's it. But there's so much more to Christianity, uh, which means imitating Christ, which means you have to know him and know about him mm. in order to look like yeah. him. So that means that we've got to know yeah. the word and we don't just know it by rote and know it in our heads, but we translate into everyday practical principles that we can then walk out so that we get that victory that God mm. talks about. Because I think that there are a lot of uh, disappointed Christians um, because they don't use the word of God. They mm. don't get the results that are promised, but people keep talking to them about promises, but they don't tell them how to how, get the promise. How, we'll be right back. I want to talk a bit, I want you to tell us a bit more about that. Okay. We'll be right back. You're welcome back to the Today's Woman Show. And talking about the Today's Woman Show, mm -hmm. what would you say, Lady Michelle, what, what is your definition of a Today's Woman? 
I would say today's woman is evolving mm. and uh, finally learning her power. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Do you think, why would you say that? Would you say that women didn't know, you know, the power we had or how to use it or, mm -hmm. you know, so? Well, I think that a lot of women were duped in th thinking that it was a man's world mm -hmm. and not understanding what that meant in the context of who they are and how they contribute to that. After all, God said man needed help. Mm -hmm. So obviously woman is quite powerful, powerful because yes. he can, the yes. man is, cannot function well without the woman. And it takes the two, actually, mm. to come together to build a strong community, society, and world. Mm. So when women understand what their power is and what they have to contribute to that, they can celebrate that and stop thinking that they're less than because mm. they were made from the side of man, not mm. the back of man. Did you hear that? You are today's woman. You are made from the side, not from the back. Celebrate yourself. Yes. And talking about celebration, I mean, today is all about you. We are celebrating <laughs> oh, wow. you. We've got an amazing sponsor, Yaz. Mm -hmm. Okay, they, they make Yaz sanitary pads and all that. Uh -huh. And now they give each and every one of my beautiful guests a gift. Wow. So this is a gift from Yaz to you. Wonderful. And there are so many different things in there there you know, sanitary towels in there, there's soaps, there are okay. exercise books. So you can use, I mean, I know you're a mother to many. You yes, can be a yes. blessing I'm, to I'm somebody I'm past else. the uh, sanitary yeah. part, but... <laughs> But I have young ladies. That's okay. You have, you have young ladies <laughs> Soap is always a must. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank Yad. you. And I have a special gift for you. Oh. And I mean, I've been looking, so looking forward to this part where I give wow. you this. Okay, so and you've this, got your own bag. I yes, 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 yes. Oh. So this is the Rene Q Love Pillow. Let me tell you about I this. I love it. So... What the it colors. is, I am, in, I am really encouraging, and, and that's everything that you've said. Beautiful. Know who you are, know your power, know your strength, yes. all of that. And that's what I'm doing. I'm really encouraging women to love wow. themselves. When you love yourself, you can yes. love everybody else. So this is a little tiny gift, and anytime Thank you, you squeeze it, I want you to just remind yourself of how special you are. It's going to go in my bedroom. Very, very, very special <laughs> to me and to so many women out there, Thank and you. men as well. Thank so you so much. So I want so you much. to tell us one thing mm -hmm. you love about yourself. When you look in the mirror, what do you say, Michelle? I don't know. What's one thing you could say you absolutely love about yourself? Um, probably that I'm just comfortable in the skin I'm in at this mm. point. And that, for me, is a great achievement. Right. Yeah. Right. You heard that, ladies. You know, <laughs> seriously, you know, just being you yeah. and accepting who you, who you are, appreciating who you are, yeah. that's enough. Yeah. That is enough. You are today's woman. And you have to love yourself in order to even be loved. That's true. Love yourself. Be you. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Thank you so <laughs> much for you. coming on the show today. Thank you, you for know, having today me. Today is a special day, and I'm so glad to have you. And I'm so glad you you love my pillow. I do. Always remember me. I'm a me. pillow girl. Uh oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today on the Today's Woman Show. Don't miss it next week, Saturday, 11 a.m. on TV3 and DSTV channel 279. And many thanks to our sponsors, the Movin Pick Ambassador Hotel, for this beautiful set. Yaz Sanitary Pad, thank you so much. GTP, Ridicule Love Pillow, pushing and pressing on for women to love and appreciate themselves. And I hope you're as inspired and empowered as I am. I'm so glad a winning woman really has made me feel like I'm a really, really, really big winner. And so are you because you're today's woman and you are good enough. See you next week and stay blessed.